Now, the sad uh, after news on that is that Peter Popov is right back in business. He went out of business, declared bankruptcy within four days of the Carson show. Uh, declared bankruptcy, went out of business, retired, changed the name of his ministry. We didn't hear from him for quite some years. He's on the Black Entertainment Network now. He's uh, got an organization called People United for Christ, and uh, he does exactly the same thing. He's right back in business, continuing on, just where I made him stop for at least a few years. Now, don't you think, you folks here at the Space Flight Center, that you're free of guilt? I'm coming after you right now. Edgar Mitchell, remember that name? Article from the New York Times some years ago after Edgar Mitchell returned from a lunar trip. And it said that uh, he had done really wonderful things. This is what the New York Times article reported, and I will tell you what really happened. This is the contents of the New York Times report. Edgar Mitchell, astronaut, did an experiment unknown to the folks at NASA, which was not scheduled and was strictly his own idea. He cooperated with Duke University back on Earth, where parapsychological research has been done for some years now, in a small ESP experiment whereby, at a prearranged rest period on his way back from the moon, but still many, many miles out in space, he, with a scrap of paper and a pen, constructed a small deck of ESP cards, similar to those cards you saw there. Five symbols of each, making a deck of 25 cards. He thoroughly mixed them. Then he concentrated on them one at a time during the rest period. Then he put them in a paper clip and brought them back to Earth with him, and he sent them off to Duke University, where they were analyzed for accuracy, because there was a psychic back on Earth named Olaf Johnson in Chicago who was concentrating at that very same moment to see if he could pick up the telepathic image from far out in space. He was so successful that the results he got were 1 to 3,000 against chance. Whoa, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, the actual facts. There was not one psychic on Earth, there were three. The other two aren't mentioned because they didn't get anything. The results were pretty bad. Oh, there was another problem. The rest period was postponed for two hours. So at the time that they were concentrating on Earth, he hadn't even made the deck of cards yet. But they got around that by saying this was precognition <laughs> instead of ESP, you see. That seems to be a moderately heavy difficulty, wouldn't you think? But the best is yet to come. It turns out that Olaf Johnson was really wrong. The chances of him missing the results that he got, the, of getting such bad results, were 3,000 to 1. It was a negative result. He missed grandly and spectacularly so badly that to get bad results like that, the chances were 3,000 in one. <laughs> That's the so-called ESP experiment that was unknown to NASA, but done with Duke University back on Earth. This is the kind of thing that happens, folks. This is what the New York Times reported. In the New York Times yet, they found out subsequently, I made sure they found out what the conditions actually were, they never write another story because they referred to that in their language as a non-story. Somebody goes missing in the Bermuda Triangle, gone for three days. It's terrible. We reported all the statistics, uh, the statistics on the thing. It's fantastic. This is yet another person swallowed up by the Bermuda Triangle. The same afternoon, the person shows up alive and well. They've been on shore for two days, and they're going to be going to the casino. Oh, I didn't know I was missing. Yeah, well, I was missing. Does that end up in the newspaper? No. But the story of the original disappearance ends up in a book on the Bermuda Triangle, not the fact that the person survived who wasn't lost after all. That's what the media does. So the belief in the paranormal, the occult, and the supernatural that we are so plagued with presently, I lay at the feet, largely, of the media. Fox Network told the American public that we've never been to the moon. Millions of people believed it. I got a letter just recently, it's on my webpage this week, as a matter of fact, from Arthur C. Clarke, who said, I can't believe that 20% of the American population is so stupid. That's not a technical term, that's what the, the term is that he used. He says, I really can't believe, how do they explain 
all of the people that had to be silenced. There was something like 160,000 people that were in on that hoax. <laughs> With Watergate, we only had four guys and we couldn't hold on to the secret. <laughs> who was it who said that, uh, uh, I guess it was Ben Franklin, bless him, he said so many good stuff, good things, didn't he? Down through the years, one of his bits of good stuff was, any secret can be held by three people if two of them are dead. <laughs> he also said something else about this very substance right here. There are no greater liars in the world than quacks, except for their patients. So Ben, there's two for you right there. We need more guys like Ben Franklin who will speak plainly and come out in front of audiences like this and speak plainly, and I hope I have done so today. I have another videotape to show you.